National security, refugees, and domestic terror. We'll talk about that right after this. Hi, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Here's your host, Representative Rick Crawford. And welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Representative Rick Crawford. Uh, my pleasure to be with you again uh, for another edition of Tune In. Lots to talk about uh, regarding national security, how we address uh, the threat of terror, and how our immigration policy plays into that. Um, just on Sunday night, the president delivered a speech addressing that concern, of specifically the San Bernardino, San Bernardino shootings, ISIS, and the threat of terrorism in general. And um, basically, he did speak in very general terms. The speech, from my perspective, did very little um, to address the aggressive and evolving threat that ISIS poses. Uh, the president said, quote, the strategy that we're using now, that is how we'll achieve a more sustainable victory. Here it is. The strategy that we are using now, airstrikes, special forces, and working with local forces who are fighting to regain control of their own country, that is how we'll achieve a more sustainable victory. Unfortunately, miscalculations uh, from the administration about ISIS and the disregard for border security have left me and most Americans um, more and more concerned about what happened in San Bernardino and how that could become more commonplace here in America and the direct link between them and Al-Qaeda or ISIS. In this case, we know that uh, uh, the perpetrator did pledge her allegiance to ISIS. And did you hear what I said there? Pledged her allegiance to ISIS. So we know that this is not just something that is uh, being left to the men, that women are being involved in this as well. Um, instead of insisting that this be about what we shouldn't do, and, I, and the president has a habit of laying out a laundry list of things that we won't do um, as it applies to our military action whether it be in Afghanistan or in the uh, ISIS theater or whatever. And I think that's fundamentally wrong. I don't think you should ever tell the enemy what you won't do. I think what the enemy should believe and what we should tell them is that we will do anything and everything in our power um, to destroy them because that's what we're supposed to do. And unfortunately, I think the president, um, he just doesn't have the same view. Um, he talked about in the second half of his speech, the president um, uh, you know, he, he just insisted on things that we wouldn't do, and, and I think he should talk more about uh, what we need to do to keep you safe and, and, and the rest of us. Um, we're living in a new reality, and I, I think the president uh, just refuses to accept that. And, uh, you know, we have some very real threats um, that should take precedence over political correctness. Now, look, I've said this before. I'll say it again. We can't continue to address the problems that this nation faces through the lens of political correctness. Um, we just can't continue to do that. And um, to me, that may be one of our biggest enemies, one of our greatest threats, is continuing to address every issue that we face, whether it be military, whether it be economic, whether we're talking about social issues. Uh, political correctness reigns supreme in this administration, and that's permeated our, our culture. And, and it really, it's starting to manifest itself everywhere else across the globe, and not just here at home. But from my perspective, keeping our nation secure um, is something that we have to address. And, and that ongoing balancing act that we have, that we, we've got to be very quick in addressing our, our security gaps when they arise. Um, and, and we're just not doing that. Let me tell you what we are doing in the House, though. Uh, we are taking action towards making America more secure. Now, you may have been watching uh, legislatively what's done or what's being done. For example, the House uh, just this week passed H.R. 158. It's called the Visa Waiver Improvement and Terrorist Travel Prevention Act. I'm going to give you some details on that. The visa, the visa Waiver Program, or the VWP, allows 20 million people annually from 38 participating countries to more easily travel to the U.S. for up to 90 days. It's estimated that approximately 6,000 Europeans have traveled to Syria and Iraq to join ISIS, many of whom are from countries that participate in the Visa Waiver Program. Many of these countries fail to provide the U.S. intelligence community with critical information 
that we need to ensure that those traveling under the visa waiver program are not a threat to the United States. In order to address those vulnerabilities, the Visa Waiver Improvement and Terrorist Travel Prevention Act basically does four things. Let me run that down for you. Number one, it denies VWP eligibility to individuals based on their recent travel to a listed country, for example, Iraq or Syria, or uh, nations that are uh, state sponsors of terror. Number two, it denies VWB eligibility to individuals based on dual nationality with a listed country, for example, Iraq, Syria, or state sponsors of terror. It requires VWP countries to adopt passports with electronic chips by April so that people's travel documents are more verifiable. That's critical. Uh, and number four, it requires VWP countries to check travelers against Interpol databases and to report lost or stolen passports within 24 hours. But there are so many security threats beyond that that the president has to address. Uh, Syrian refugees, for instance, we've been talking about that now for a month. Uh, leadership in the House is working on defunding the resettlement program in the year-end spending bill. And as some of you may recall, I spoke on our last tune-in about a bill I introduced that would allow states the right to refuse entry to refugees from that area. I continue to support that. I'm very pleased that our governor stood up and said we don't want to have those refugees placed in the state of Arkansas. We're seeing some legal wrangling with that in the state of Texas uh, because they have also pushed back on that. My bill would have given governors the authority to say no without question. Um, and so we're going to continue to work on this. But I don't know. You may recall I, I had a I had an opportunity to talk to a reporter um, shortly after the Paris incident. And I said then that, uh, you know, today it was Paris, uh, France. Tomorrow it could be Paris, Texas, or Paris, Tennessee. I didn't miss by much. It was San Bernardino, San Bernardino California. And we can't continue to stand by and, and not take the kind of action that I think is necessary to address primarily our security in this nation. Uh, we'll keep you posted on this, folks. I appreciate you being part of Tune In again. That's all I have for today. But I do want to remind you that if you want to get uh, be involved in our program, write the office, visit our website. You can get the address, and we'll continue updating on what action the House is taking to improve domestic uh, security. Until then, tweet us at TuneInAR1, at TuneInAR1. Give us your name, give us your hometown so we can properly attribute your comments, and we'll look forward to hearing from you. That's all for today. Thanks. Have a great one.